In the Solar One trial, we saw a significant progression-free survival benefit from alpelisib added to fulvestrant in patients whose cancers had progressed on non-steroidal aromatase inhibitors. But the time when Solar One was was uh, accruing patients actually was before there was widespread use of cyclin-dependent kinase 4-6 inhibitors, so-called CDK 4-6 inhibitors. Now there are three drugs on the market, and based on recent survival data, they are largely our first approach in treating hormone receptor positive uh, metastatic breast cancer or locally advanced disease. And uh, you know, we give this in combination mostly with non steroidal aromatase inhibitors, sometimes even with fulvestrant, uh, based on data that suggests you get similar outcome. So if somebody had relapsed on a non steroidal aromatase inhibitor, they might get fulvestrant, right? So in the Solar One trial, tiny percentage of patients had prior CDK4-6 inhibitors. So a big question was, even though the mechanism is different, I mean, it's a completely different pathway, does it still work or do you get, and what's its safety in patients who've had prior CDK4-6 inhibitors and then had progressive disease? You, in the BILEAVE study, you can only have two lines of therapy, so one or two lines of therapy in the metastatic setting and patients receive an endocrine therapy that they didn't just get. So if you were on fulvestrant, you get letrozole. If you were on a non steroidal AI, you get fulvestrant. And it doesn't matter if you previously had progressive disease on that drug. So it's actually gonna be really interesting. We're gonna learn a lot from this study. Uh, we have several cohorts of patients, and the last cohort, which is accruing now, are patients who've had two lines of therapy but can have received chemotherapy also and the CDK4-6 inhibitor was not their last treatment. So these are people who might have more endocrine-resistant disease. So we're gonna learn a lot. One is, does alpelisib work even when you have resistance to the endocrine partner? And secondly is, what is the impact of prior CDK4-6 inhibition on the efficacy of alpelisib? Probably the most important outcome variable from by leave. And then of course we'll have additional safety data, which I think is really important because we know better how to manage alpelisim now, so we'll have better information about sort of how do you do when you already know how to manage the toxicity. In uh, the Bileev study, we saw actually that in the second 50% of patients, there was less discontinuation for toxicity than in the first 50%. So practitioner education plays a really big role in managing these drugs. We have little preliminary data from Bileev we presented at uh, San Antonio last year and showed that uh, the results in terms of response look pretty similar to the initial uh, Solar One trial. So I think that um, this data will be really helpful.